you. Okay. Welcome after the coffee break. Uh, our first speaker in this session will be Monika Sitek, and she will tell us about the Astrovic Telescope. Okay, welcome everybody. I would like to tell you a little bit about uh, my work in Warsaw Observatory, uh, connected with uh, Gaia and uh, follow up by the alerts. So, small telescope but bigger power because uh, we are right now during the modernization of our equipment. Uh, I thought that I will be able to show you uh, how it uh, works, the new camera and new equipment, but unfortunately because of some technical issues, um, we have a small delay, but next year probably we'll show you everything. On the picture, you can see our telescope by night. Uh, what, why, and when? What's going on? So, uh, uh, we are in this uh, city, in Ostrovik, since uh, 1952. So it's uh, quite old uh, observatory. And this telescope, which we use right now, it's 60, 60 centimeters uh, Cassegrain, and uh, it's almost 15, uh, 50 years. Next year, we will celebrate the uh, anniversary of the telescope. But the CCD camera is the first CCD camera uh, in Poland. The first picture we took uh, July 1991. Uh, so the camera last year had 30 years, so it's high time for changing. And right now we will, uh, we are waiting for new camera. And uh, yesterday I get information that we already have the camera. So probably um, January, we start observation by new equipment. I hope January, February, uh, we will have new new observations. Uh, the camera is bigger, uh, so probably um, we can uh, do a little bit deeper pictures because right now uh, we can, with very good seeing, we can reach about 16 and a half, 17 magnitudes. Uh, with new camera, probably one or two magnitudes uh, deeper, but we will see uh, next year. We will have additional auto guiding. Uh, we have already mounted new um, tracking by the dome. So uh, more automatic telescope we will have. And what we would like to have more, what is uh, my main point to, to develop, develop our observatory is to uh, build one new fully automatically autom automatical telescope which follow uh, the sky each night uh, and then we could get some alerts from our place to to get information to our team uh, if we can go to observe or not but uh, for now we are waiting for some additional foundations um, Schedule uh, for uh, for the observations uh, is really important thing, and we try to uh, connect three uh, subjects. One is the science, which we already doing, uh, education, which we already doing, and uh, outreach, because if we uh, uh, get the proper team connected between students and uh, observers. We can teach new observers and in the same time make proper science, uh, which is uh, really important for education for them and to have really good start when they're looking for uh, their PhD studies or postdocs. So the whole team, which will 
hopefully made uh, during uh, next year, will uh, connect students and proper observers from our team, I hope. My students, I'm looking to you, <laughs> you will observe. <laughs> So, uh, and outreach. Outreach is really important as well because people don't know anything about, uh, about the science, what we are doing, about existing of observa observatories in their society. So informing people uh, is really important to get money as well for developing the science case in the observatory. So if you are able to, <laughs> count this uh, percent of the presentation, it's more than 100%. Why? It's just because uh, they are uh, puzzling and together connected. So when we do science, we do education. And that's the main point to compare everything together, not doing only the science, but prepare uh, next generation of observatories, of, of, of observers on good equipment with good science in international uh, society as we are here, for example. So the main goal for now is to uh, observe alerts and probably uh, new targets uh, by the students for the masters and other projects uh, which help them to get proper uh, technical education. And if you want to contact me, uh, you have everything on the screen. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? Do we have questions on Zoom? Uh, all right, uh, so we can speak with Monica whenever today. And now uh, the next speaker is Karolina Bonkowska from Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun, and she will speak about Kaya alerts in Pinice. Hello, everyone. Uh, as in Monica case, I am in the same situation, maybe uh, two steps farther, uh, but it is only because of the fact that we decided to do renovation of our instruments without uh, the aim of uh, being all of them uh, automatic. So it would be definitely way less about the Gaia alerts and more about telescopes, but I would like to show you some unique photographs so, <laughs> okay, so uh, three optical telescopes, uh, the one on the left, the historical Henry Draper telescope, just for the uh, outreach purpose, very beautiful. I really uh, invite you all to Pivnice uh, near Torun to see this instrument. Uh, it, is, uh, it was re renovated, so uh, definitely worth seeing in, in a very beautiful shape. And two other telescopes, the uh, 60 centimeter, the a double ganger of the one in Ostrovik, and 90 centimeter, the biggest optical one in Poland, of course. So uh, we started uh, with the smaller telescope renovation and uh, recoding of, um, uh, of the mirrors. So the first difficult task was to pack properly the mirror that we will need only recoding, not a new mirror. It wasn't an easy task because the mirror is about 80 kilograms. So two and sometimes with Pavel help three men when were, were required. And the most challenging task was, as you see on the bottom right uh, photograph, uh, our staircase. However, everything went well. And in July, one year ago, the telescope uh, 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 obtained a, a recoded mirror. So unpacking and of course with uh, help uh, from uh, from uh, uh, people also from uh, Krakow, uh, we uh, mounted the uh, mirror on the 60 centimeters uh, telescope and it is fully oper operational. You saw some uh, results from 
my student presented uh, on Tuesday about uh, observations uh, based on observations from the 60 centimeter telescope. And then the bigger ch challenge. Oh, ooh, okay. So the bigger challenge, so the 90 centimeter telescope, and of course it's mirror also required uh, uh, recording. So this is the dome and this telescope. How big is the mirror? You can see by uh, comparing our main technicians, Bishek Wyszykowski is right now uh, on this photo sitting and looking directly on the mirror. And for example, on the left photographs, you can easily see how when we are changing, for example, or uh, opening the filter, we, we are uh, in the middle, hidden in, uh, inside uh, the tube. And this time the mirror uh, is like about 30, uh, 300 kilograms. Uh, and with this uh, back part of the telescope, it is around 800 kilograms. So this uh, wasn't a task like even for a very strong three or four men, it was, uh, uh, it was not a uh, sufficient power. So uh, we, we had an uh, additional instrument and these photographs shows when the uh, mirror already came back in uh, November, it was uh, uh, properly mounted on the telescope back, but this uh, whole um, uh, the whole situation was a, uh, not an easy task, so every every step of the way uh, was a challenge for for for, for our uh, for our team. And you see on these photographs, for example, Zbyszczek was checking whether we can uh, put uh, mirror safely. Uh, uh, on the on the lift or Pavel in the middle photograph was. I think he was leaving a fingerprint on the mirror, at least the first one. But finally, I the was checking the aluminization. Of course. <laughs> layer. Yes, that's true. Pavel was checking the aluminization layer, but everything also went very smoothly. And uh, with the uh, beautiful uh, coated mirror, we can re right now observe. And finally, going to the topic of my uh, presentation. Uh, we uh, starting uh, we started um, in January and uh, monitoring right now 13 Gaia alerts. Um, so we gathered during the last eight months uh, till the end of um, August uh, nearly 40 nights of observation. So pretty decent weather. Uh, what was difficult and a little bit delayed uh, uh, scientific results was that we were intensively testing how we should observe, uh, what size of the frames we need, uh, and so on. So we had like eight different formats of, that, uh, of data and uh, only with uh, enormous uh, help of Przemek Mikowajczyk very much thank you. Uh, we managed to prepare uh, files to Black Hole Tom to upload all the different type of data. Uh, we started with uh, standard Johnson filters, right now we moved to Sloan, and uh, the data are right now as are being uploaded to Black Hole Tom, so you will be seeing them. Some of them are already uploaded, some of them not yet. And uh, one of the object we chose for um, Toro uh, uh, first observing uh, campaign and then we thought uh, investigation was ZTF, Stasek already mentioned about this object. We uh, have uh, this big um, um, observation run from all the observers uh, who are in Black, uh, Black Hole Tom, but uh, uh, our nights, uh, this is only the first part, cover a, a few nights uh, from uh, February to, to April on the right plot. However, we were uh, slightly discouraged by with the analysis, how, can, uh, how difficult can it be by the paper you have uh, presented here. Uh, it's supposed to be nature, but it isn't, so we will see about it. Uh, and this is actually everything. So if you have any pre uh, questions or the ideas regarding cataclysmic variables, this is my main topic of interest. And of course, it was yesterday, so probably my talk should be uh, should have been yesterday. We have a small little kittens recently uh, born in Pivnice. They are usually sleeping in this flower pot. It's very lovely. So if you would like to see them, 
I invite you to speak once again. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, so do we have any questions from the audience? Yes. I just would Okay, I just would like to comment that uh, it's not true that you can see this three kitten because <laughs> two of them I, I, I just took to my home. <laughs> there is only one there. <laughs> oh, so there are three in Oslovic. We can share. <laughs> Okay, I think this is a crucial part of information. <laughs> okay, so do we have any questions on Zoom? No. All right, so I guess we'll stay in touch. Uh, yes, the next speaker is joining us from virtual space. And uh, let's welcome the next speaker, Giuseppe Morello uh, from the uh, Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias. And he will speak about the Muscat 2 network. Do we have Giuseppe online? No, I don't see him. Okay, so... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> well, we are a bit ahead of the schedule, I believe, so... Yes, but uh, he's not there. Shall so we move to the next speaker? Then? I think we should move to the next speaker, yes. Okay, so uh, next speaker is, is Michal, am I correct? Yes. So let's welcome Michal Reimo from the University of Zelnagura, and he will speak about Rotus. Hello everybody, I'm Michał from Zielona Góra and this will be a, some short intro about our new and the first robotic telescope. Uh, okay, and the first question is where is Zielona Góra? Zielona Góra is somewhere between Berlin, Poznań and uh, Wrocław. Uh, <laughs> we have a quite small institute there, uh, but but <laughs> what we can do. Okay, and uh, as you can see, as you can see, our team is also small. <laughs> that, uh, that in the Rotus team, uh, I'm alone, but but we have some open positions. And if anybody is interested in to join us, let me know. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of place <laughs> there for a new, new a lot of money, of course. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Okay, but about the Rotus, uh, about our system. Mm, this in the system we have uh, two telescopes. One main telescope, 0 0.5 meter Dalkirham, corrected Dalkirham telescope with uh, CMOS camera and filter wheels. It's not so big field uh, field of view, 23 by uh, 17 arc minutes. And also we have the second telescope, 0 0.25 meters Rasa telescope with really big uh, CMOS camera and one fixed earth long filter with really big field of view, 3.2 arc uh, degrees uh, field of view. And everything is mounted on the L500 mount in alt azimuth mode, uh, also produced by, uh, by plane wave. Uh, okay. And the uh, first, first year the telescope spent in EI telescope hosting, uh, located in Extremadura in Spain. Mm, this is, I think, big, the biggest uh, telescope hosting place in Europe. Uh, they over 250 clear nights per year, but also really high humidity during the winter. It is not so good for the telescopes. And some special thing in this, uh, in this uh, place is that every telescope has 3.3 meters uh, of space and individual roof that uh, you can control your, uh, this roof. Mm, uh, yeah, mm, you decide when, uh, when to open and or close a roof. Okay. Mm, okay, and uh, the first slide mm, I was taken in, uh, in October, 2021. And after, oh yeah, and this is a photo from, from this place. And almost, after one year, we moved, we are moving to the Chile uh, because generally the telescope is already there, 
but uh, is uh, unmounted still. In the next week, I'm going to, to Chile to mount everything and to calibrate everything. Mm, this is uh, also the, the telescope hosting place. Uh, the difference is the, mm, there, are, there are shared observatories with the one common roof for many telescopes. Uh, automatic, uh, the, and there, of course, is a system for automatic opening and closing depending on the weather conditions, which I think is better for the robotic telescopes because controlling roof is not easy thing. And also, as you can see here, um, if you if you want to observe on low um, altitudes like I don't know 2.0 air mass, the the, there is a possibility to collide between the telescope and the roof. And uh, but what, what can I say that the plan wave made a really good telescope because we already hit the telescope, the roof uh, four times and still everything is, is good. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. What's what next? Okay. And our main objectives, uh, our main. Uh, main topic is uh, exoplanet transit timing in cooperation with uh, SUTO, Silesian University of Technology Observatories group. And as a part of this group, um, we are in the exoclock project uh, for Ariel mission. And also we are a part of a, a test mission follow-up as a, a seeing emitted photometry, photometry group. And also in this subject, we cooperate with the Adyaman Observatory in Turkey. We cooperate with, uh, with the, um, Anna Marciniak from uh, Adam uh, Mickiewicz University in Poznan in the topic of uh, asteroid topics and also in the Gaia Alerts in the BH Tom. Uh, and uh, on, on the other side, uh, we cooperate with the Sibylia Technologies in the space surveillance and tracking project uh, for near earth object and space debris observations and uh, there is also a small informal group of the telescopes um, for simultaneous and continuous observations and in this group we have the our rotus in chile now uh, the telescope in adiaman in turkey 0 0.6 meter the sukhor observatory uh, the one telescope from Suto in Otivar in Spain, and also the, the PVC Observatory. Uh, okay, and our control system, our control system is uh, ABOT, astronomical robot created by Sibylla Technologies. Uh, it's optimized time spent on the hardware preparations, take care of the observations and calibration of the data. Generally, the, the full system for robotic telescopes. And uh, also observations uh, planning. The web plan is also created by Sibylla. And here is an example how it looks that each night is split into the 15 minute blocks that we can uh, plan for a project or for one specific object. In green, it's not clearly visible here, but in green uh, are the objects from BH Tom. Still not reduce it because <laughs> there is not enough manpower for reduce all of this data. And we still don't have a um, um, automatic file drive for reducing uh, whole data. But uh, as you can see, there are some empty places and uh, we need help to fill these empty places. The problem is that our planning strategy is that we have a two week planning blocks for main objectives like exoplanet and asteroids. This is around 60% of the time. Then remaining time up to 80% is for project like Beach Tom, uh, but previously selected from a list. I have selected, oh, okay, maybe for these two weeks, I want to observe this and this object, okay? And 20% for the SST project, and but still, almost every night, we have some few, sometimes one, sometimes two, or more, empty 15 minutes blocks, 
And the question is that if you know if there is anything like API in BHTOM, maybe in the version two, that we can download the the object with the high priority for one specific night, okay? Because the the this um, observation for SST projects are planned every night at the evening, and just before the night, we know if there are some empty blocks or not. And uh, not always I can feel this 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 uh, gaps in the in the plan. And if there is any API, we know how to control our telescope. We know how to communicate with the services like, I don't know, any other services. But this what we need is a point uh, that we can, uh, we can connect uh, with, with our, our system and download some list of the objects for, 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 um, for tonight. OK? OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, do we have? Oh, yes. Yeah. I, well, I have. Well, I. I was asked, so I have to reply. Um, so, well, I think yes yeah, about the, that one. Yeah. So, fifteen minutes. It's it's plenty of time. Yes. You can do a lot. You can do many targets actually. Yes. Fifteen minutes. Right. Yes. So there is a build building API in each town. Uh, but you're probably the first person asking for it. Um, it's there. Uh, so the simplest thing to do is to have a filter which is tuned for your telescope, right? So BHTOM um, has a, you send a, a, a filtered question and it changes every day. Uh, every time you ask, it's different. So depending on visibility of the target, priority of the target, and you can get a very quick reply. Um, okay. You just have to tell us exactly what you need. Uh, in terms of, do you need a name of it, or just coordinates, or just what? just a list of the objects with coordinates and priority? Yeah, yeah, it's there. It's there. We just okay. need to sit Great. and do it uh, because it's it's Great. a waste of time. Fifteen minutes? Yes, yes, yes every of night. Course. Of we course. accumulate it over a year. <laughs> of that's course, a lot of time. So we can have many targets observed. Definitely Great. should be done. One more question, if I may. Uh, <laughs> so with this this unofficial network, we have global network. Is there a particular target you observe? You select something uh, interesting, or you just no, they, do it they, for fun. This was created. Uh, this was created uh, for the um, observations with a radio telescope from Pignica. Uh. Um, Marcin Gavronski suggests that maybe we can observe together uh, in radio and optical bands uh, some flared stars, and this was. Yeah, but it's top secret. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Okay, but so at the, the, the radio target actually proposed by Martin, the Gaia 20 AZC. Yeah. I just sent an email around, so I hope you will be able to observe it yes. as well, unless it's going to be a bit too fake for you. Maybe. Anyway, the, the apertures limit you to the brightest, I guess, yes. right? Yeah. Let's see if you can go to 16, I guess. For sure. Yes. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have questions on Zoom? Because I didn't ask. No. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And now, do we have Giuseppe online? Let me check. Hi, yes, I am. Hello, uh, great. So now let's welcome Giuseppe uh, and his talk about uh, the Muscat 2 network. Giuseppe, the floor okay. is yours. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thanks uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity to present uh, the Muscat network, uh, even if uh, remotely. I now try to share my screen. Okay. So do, I guess you see it well. So uh, yeah. I will talk about the Muscat uh, project. Uh, so uh, what it is, it is an instrument that is located at the Telescopio Carlos Sanchez. Uh, that has a 1.5 meter aperture size in the Observatorio del Teide in the Canary Islands. Uh, so this is the exact location. Uh, it is at uh, over 2000 meter altitude 
and uh, a good uh, it is a very good location because uh, uh, there's a 80 percent weather success rate which means that the telescope uh, is uh, available with good weather around uh, 300 nights per uh, year but uh, of course th this number of nights uh, uh, should be a little lower because uh, sometimes of uh, technical uh, test or reparations and the average seeing is uh, 0 0.8 uh, arc seconds during the night uh, the instrument in itself uh, here is a picture uh, is a four band simultaneous images that observe in the g r i and z bands uh, for which the transmission filters uh, are uh, reported here. This is the total uh, transmission, uh, including uh, all the optical contributions. And uh, uh, further technical details about the instruments are reported in a uh, Narita et al. paper from 2019. Uh, it is mostly used for the analysis of uh, no, for, um, to observe transiting exoplanets and mostly for validating uh, that they are actually planets and uh, not eclipsing binary, for example. Uh, yeah, just as an illustrative purpose, uh, there's uh, um, one of the first observation of uh, WASP-12b, that is a star with uh, 11.57 magnitude in the visible, uh, taken in uh, 2018. And... Uh, uh, Bands. And uh, on the top right uh, corner of each panel, you can see the RMS precision obtained in uh, uh, one minute uh, integration. Uh, next. Ah, okay, and uh, uh, just uh, um, this kind of this is a useful application for multicolor validation of contamination analysis. So we can identify whether. Um, a planet uh, is uh, a, pl a planetary transit is contaminated by a star. Uh, this uh, kind of analysis was pioneered by Anu Parviainen, and uh, yeah, I also made uh, recently a paper for validating the discovery of two planets. Uh, about uh, your interest, uh, so when the telescope is available and how? So the majority of the observing time, as I mentioned, is dedicated to test follow-up programs, in particular for the validation of candidate exoplanets. There are also some uh, uh, programs to uh, check transit timing variations. And uh, other programs can be related, for example, to uh, stellar activity, stellar monitoring for exoplanet transit of stars. But... Uh, uh, Sometimes there are also uh, kind of proposal welcome uh, in which uh, I say proposal is not a formal proposal uh, with a written application form, but uh, you just uh, should contact uh, the PIs of the instrument that are uh, Norio Narita and uh, Enric Pallet. And uh, in some cases, non-exoplanet science uh, is also welcome uh, if it has a very high scientific gain. And uh, in some case, and especially if it does not interfere with the main programs, uh, there are some nights uh, in which uh, we don't have a very high priority target to observe. And uh, almost uh, every night uh, uh, we can schedule 10 to 15 minute uh, uh, snapshots uh, that uh, are more likely to be accepted. And uh, we have a website uh, that uh, report uh, all the information uh, beyond the uh, published paper by Narita et al. And uh, as a final note, there is not only Muscat2, uh, but uh, there is a network of three similar instruments. Uh, the first was located in uh, the Okayama Observatory in Japan. Muscat2 is uh, here in Tenerife, and uh, Muscat3 uh, is um, located in Maui, in the Hawaii. And uh, it is the most uh, modern uh, detector of the three, of course. So that's it. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Okay. <laughs> Hi, Joseph. Uh, Pavel. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to, to ask you about um, some uh, help with the observations on the Carol Sanchez telescope because by using Muscat 2, 
because we were aware that uh, Opticon observing time last last uh, last time. So as, I, as far as I remember, uh, we have a service mode on uh, Carlos Sanchez telescope. Uh, so yes, so uh, this is one thing we will need uh, some help uh, with the observation. So are you are you able to help with that? Well, uh, I think so, because I, I'm uh, one of the observers uh, that I normally perform uh, remotely from uh, home. Uh, so uh, do you need, uh, um, yeah. are you referring to practically uh, suggestion on how to make the observations or to conduct the observations? Actually, yes, we, we will need help with everything because that would be the first time when we use this uh, facility. Uh, but okay, it seems that you have more experience than we, so for sure we will be con in contact. Uh, the second thing is, is it possible to uh, ask for some observations on request? I mean, without uh, the formal way, without the uh, proposal procedures. By yeah, yes, uh, in fact, uh, this is what I meant, uh, uh, that uh, there, there are no uh, proper proposal, but uh, you should just contact the PIs that are either Enric Payet or uh, Norio Narita, and uh, I can put uh, you in contact uh, with them as well, or discuss uh, about uh, the interest of your project. Uh, and so I can directly talk with Enric, uh, for example. Okay. That's I wanted to Thank you. So just to follow on this, uh, hi, this is Lukasz here. Um, uh, yeah, so the question would be, how do we schedule? Uh, if you have some empty slots, uh, how do we let you know? But if it's, this is just an email, a matter of email, then we are ready to send an email. Uh, we would be happy to provide either with one or two targets. And normally, we, the observations we need, they can be taken anytime, uh, anytime there is a slot, but for a long period of time. And I'm talking, you know, weeks or months. And if that is possible, we would definitely be interested. Okay, so yes, there are, uh, as I said, the possibility to have uh, snapshot observations. And uh, uh, they basically every night, if they are short time. Uh, and uh, um, you can uh, just communicate the interest for this, this target and uh, give uh, some uh, information on if there are some constraints about the observations. And uh, uh, then the way it works, uh, if it is uh, a snapshot, basically they are scheduled according to priority. They are assigned a priority one, one to four. And uh, each night the observer decides the program, usually with one or two days in advance. But uh, if there are some uh, uh, time criticality, there is also the possibility to ask for special observations. And uh, this can be fixed uh, even uh, one month or two months in advance. Uh, but the easiest thing is just, uh, uh, as you said, uh, if you don't have uh, any time issues to communicate your interest and uh, the target will be added to the database and uh, with, a, uh, with a priority. Uh, usually uh, snapshots uh, are priority one because they are easy to execute. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And now our next speaker is Martina Larma from the University of Nova Gorica. And she will speak about a follow-up of Gaia, uh, Gaia alerts with a go telescope. The floor is yours. Hi, thank you. I hope you can hear me. Um, I will just share my screen now, just a second. Um, okay, so hi, I'm Martina Larma. I am uh, currently finishing my undergraduate studies at the University of Nova Gorica. And this summer I spent two months um, working on a, at the University of Warsaw's Astronomical Observatory, working on a microlensing project with Professor Vukas Vizhikovsky. So I will present what I did uh, to you today. So yes, I um, used gravitational microlensing to follow up uh, to Gaia scientific alerts to try to see if there are uh, stars or dark stellar remnants. So first I will give a very brief introduction about the formalism that I used since all of you are familiar with it. Um, so if we consider the natural formalism for gravitational microlensing, um, we can derive <clears throat> 
equations that can give us the mass of the lens and the distance to the lens if we know the relative proper motion between the lens and the source and also the distance to the source. So uh, here I made some assumptions about the uh, well, proper I'll motion. Mm -hmm. But we don't see the full screen. We just see your first no? slide. Oh, and okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, let me try sharing again. Just a second. Okay, let me do it like the whole screen. Okay. Can you see it moving now? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So, like I said, uh, we can derive equations that give us the mass of the lens and also the distance to the lens. However, we do need to know some additional parameters. And um, so how do we find the parameters of the microlensing event? We need to model the event using um, uh, some known models. The most simple one is the case where there's a single lens and single source, uh, which uh, if we follow the magnification of the light uh, from the source over time, we get the so-called Pachinsky light curve. Um, and we need to find the um, impact parameter uh, of the light curve by finding the best fitting model to the data. So uh, what I actually did for this project, I used the, <clears throat> I used the, so first I used the Slovenian owned Go Chile telescope to observe my selected target. And then I calibrated the images. And then I used the BHTOM website to extract photometry uh, of the target. And then I used the Python package Mulins model to model the event. So the Go Chile telescope, it's the first Slovenian owned telescope located in Chile in the south of the Atacama Desert. Uh, there's actually two telescopes there. One of them has a larger aperture of 40 centimeters and it's a refracting telescope, while the smaller one has a 72 millimeter aperture. So I used the larger telescope to observe uh, my selected target. Uh, the event that I chose is Gaia 22 AWA, uh, which was uh, published on the Gaia Scientific Alerts website. And this is the field of the um, field taken with the Go Chile telescope during my observations. Uh, I also chose another event to model. It's Gaia 22 BPL. I did not perform any observations for this event, but I used the data available on the Go Chile website. So like I said, uh, and the BHTOM website, sorry. Like I said, the BHTOM website, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar, it's designed to uh, share and uh, view observational photometric and spectroscopic data of all of its users. And then the Mulins model package is a Python package which has the capability of uh, modeling a microlensing event. So uh, now I will briefly show the results of my modeling. So first for Gaia 22 AWA, um, this, this is the best fitting model for a negative impact parameter. This is only displaying the Gaia data and the data that I collected with the Go Chile telescope. Um, uh, the Go Chile telescope, the observations were performed with non-standard filters. They were, I used R, G, and B, and then I, um, then I assigned them to standard filters on the BHTOM website. Uh, we can see that the error bars are quite large, but this is, I mean, they're overestimated uh, when performing photometry. Uh, so these are two models. We can see the model with parallax and the model without parallax, with the, uh, which is the dashed line. But the difference between these two models is quite small. Um, so I will show this model with all of the data points that were available on the BHDOM website. So here it is with all of the data points. This is again for the negative impact parameter. And then for the positive impact parameter, uh, I also modeled that, which we can't really see a difference visually. And the parameters are quite similar. So uh, here are the parameters that I obtained for this event, uh, the most important being the parallax. And uh, using the equations that I mentioned, I calculated the mass of the lens and the distance to the lens. Uh, like I said, I had to make some assumptions it's, uh, since I didn't know the relative proper motion. So I used the most likely value for uh, sources in the bulge and lenses in the disc. So four plus minus two milliard seconds per year. And I assumed that the lens, the source was at a fixed distance of eight kiloparsecs, so at the bulge. So um, I found that the lens in this case has around one solar masses um, and the distance is around four kiloparsecs. And uh, here are the corner plots for the uh, MCMC uh, 
sampling that I performed on the parameters. Uh, now for Gaia 22 BPL, I again um, perform, I again model this event using parallax and no parallax. And in this case, I included blending. However, in the previous case of Gaia 22 AWA, the model um, including blending did not converge. So I didn't include that. Uh, so for Gaia 22 BPL, uh, we see here the um, model with the positive impact parameter with blending included. And we can see that in this case, parallax is very obviously um, following the data better. Um, and then again, with a negative impact parameter. So there's a slight difference in the parameters. And now without blending, we have these, this model for a positive impact parameter and this one for a negative impact parameter. So again, I present the parameters that I obtained um, and then the mass and distance that I calculated. So in this case, the lens is much smaller. Uh, it's only about 0.14 solar masses. Um, and so once I obtained the mass and the distance to the two lenses, I, uh, I compared, so I compared the magnitude that the lens would have if it were a main sequence star located at this known distance uh, to the actual baseline magnitude of the events. Uh, so for Gaia 22 AWA, I found a range of magnitudes from 24.8 up to 13.5 magnitudes while the baseline magnitude of the event was 15.11. Now it is more likely that this lens is a star, but I cannot rule out a neutron, it being a neutron star conclusively based on its mass and uh, a possible apparent magnitude. And for Gaia 22 BPL, since it's very um, low mass, the magnitude would be very faint. So from 31.7 mag to 20.6, but it has a very bright light baseline of 12.7. So it is very likely to be a small star. So thank you for your attention. This is. Thank you so much. Uh, so do we have any questions from the audience? And do we have any questions on the Zoom? Yeah, check. Uh, you know? Yes, sorry, I, I think I couldn't be heard. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, please go ahead, Josh. Hi. It was a very nice presentation. I mean, I, I have observed both uh, of your targets uh, from Chile as well. Uh, I mean, do you uh, take data also from road? I mean, I will show them uh, in my presentation. I have uh, more than 100 nights of uh, observations of both ah. targets. So I took all of the data uh, from the BH Tom website, all of the data that was uploaded there. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yes, I'm not sure if the microphone. Oh, okay, it's working. Uh, all right, uh, so uh, we have a question on Slack, but I guess you can uh, take the discussion there. Uh, so uh, let's invite our next speaker again from the virtual space. And uh, our next speaker is Teimuras Berdadze from the Georgian National Astrophysical Observatory. And he will talk about a follow-up of Gaia uh, alerts in Ambastumani. Please go ahead. Hello, hello, do you hear me? Yes. yes, it's okay. I will try to share this screen. Okay. I'm, I'm afraid we cannot really see your screen. No. Is it okay? Unfortunately, unfortunately, still not. Uh, have you perhaps sent the presentation? So yes, I did. Maybe you will launch it from your side. 
Yes, yes, perhaps that's the best option. So you just uh, inform where to go to the next slide, I guess. Yeah, but I'm afraid it's the one without movies. Oh, yes. Okay. All right, we are ready. Okay, so uh, I'm from Georgia National Astrophysical Observatory. Formerly, it is called now or this way, but uh, maybe it is more known as an Abastromani Astrophysical Observatory. It was founded in 1932, exactly 19 years in very uh, picture uh, place uh, in the uh, southwest of Georgia. And you see the coordinates there. And its uh, altitude from uh, the sea level is about 1,650 meters. Uh, we have uh, several uh, uh, telescopes here, here in our observatory, uh, including solar telescopes. But I would like to speak only about uh, two or three projects which are act actively involved in Gaia uh, alert uh, observations. First of all, it's the next slide, please. Okay, first of all, it's a 70 centimeters meniscus telescope, uh, with, uh, which is about 60 years old, but uh, maybe it's uh, most successful instrument in our observatory because during the 60 years, it is still very busy and well equipped and involved in several uh, collaborative projects, including uh, near Earth objects and asteroids uh, and uh, like a couple of new asteroids we have discovered uh, with cooperation uh, of uh, uh, astronomers from uh, Ukraine. It is equipped with the uh, what there is a large format CCD camera and VBDR uh, filters, and also it is uh, uh, possible to install uh, objective prisms with different options. So uh, during many years, it was used for two-dimensional cl uh, spectral classification of stars. Currently, uh, uh, the two uh, projects are busy on this telescope. Another one is uh, also a cooperative project for observation of blazars. The, the uh, last uh, observation, which is interesting, maybe is presented here without video, but anyway, uh, four excerpts from the, this video, uh, uh, video observations, maybe the sequence. As a four images of impact of dart uh, onto the uh, Didymos uh, asteroid, and you see that um, the observers uh, successfully captured the moment of impact and then uh, how the ejector is expanding. So, this was a quite interesting experience in this way. So, uh, the telescope is quite active. Next slide, please. So another telescope which we use for you know, observations of Gaia, it's more actively used for you know, providing the data for BH Tom. It's a, a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, 14 inch, uh, which is equipped with Starlight Express uh, CCD camera and the uh, uh, filter set. It's uh, the field of view is about. 28 on 19 arc minutes uh, with a pixel of 0.7 arc second and uh, not too much uh, sensitive, but uh, anyway, it uh, has in a green light 52% quantum efficiency. We can, um, we can make a uh, limiting magnitude to up to 17 in V and the lowest degree is the minus 35 degrees uh, in declination. So, um, uh, here is presented a list of uh, objects which were um, observed and processed for BH Um On the uh, right side, by the way, it's uh, uh, two images when the uh, telescope was uh, equipped with the new polarization holographic imaging spectropolarimeter, which is also uh, now on the test uh, test stage, and we will continue using this uh, uh, polarimeter for 
polarization observations. And next, uh, maybe what is interesting for near future, next slide, uh, slide please. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, some uh, results which we obtained using the SCT-14 when we observed the transit of um, the, uh, candidate, uh, candidate planets. It was the campaign for two objects, TOI 2134 and 1812, and uh, we provided it to the uh, to the uh, as exophob uh, and uh, they are now in the process of um, um, calculations and maybe this will help to catch the ingress uh, especially 18 third next slide please so that's a new project for our observatory which should be finished next year at the end of 2023 it's a new 1.5 meter telescope, which will be installed um, after we will remove our old 1.25. Uh, this is a rich Ukrainian Altazimut uh, quite fast telescope with the two Nesmith ports. And uh, this will be equipped with the two uh, modern instruments, uh, Shell Yakov, Shell Fiber Fed, Shell Spectrograph, which with a high a spectral resolution of with two options, 30,000 and 50,000, and also one the Rikon XL, very large format uh, CCD with the two different filter sets. It is not guaranteed, of course, of uh, about the time, but um, uh, I, I will suggest that a lot of time will be allocated to observe microlensing events from Gaia and also uh, also, we will continue with this telescope exophob mm, observations. So that's that's just a, a small review about our observatory. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. We are well ahead of schedule, so uh, please feel free to ask questions. Um, so I just wanted to say that uh, the photo of the observatory looks really picturesque. So uh, I just wanted Thank to acknowledge. Thank you very much. Uh, You're welcome. So, do we have any questions from the audience? And do we have any from? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Deborah. This is Lukas here. Um, very nice. Yeah. I was just wondering, you know, how, what do you mean by automatic uh, 1.5 meter telescope? Because this looks like you know, a perfect telescope, but this, is this going to be automatic enough so that it means it's robotic but observing by its own or there is a human sitting somewhere and observing remotely? What do you mean by automatic? Well, there definitely will be the group uh, or the engineers will, who will, uh, who will uh, drive the telescope, of course, this is definitely, but uh, this telescope is uh, uh, driven by the ASA uh, system, which has, uh, uh, which has a, a pipeline through the TCPIP. So we will work with ASA, you know, ASA is an Austrian company, very well known. So we will work with them to have, have uh, robotic uh, options too. So, I cannot now say with with us hundred percent sure, sureness, but but uh, there is there is a, a possibility to have a pipeline for robotic operations. Okay, this is very interesting that uh, ASA. Uh, yes, both. Uh, I think we will have both options. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, do we have questions from Zoom? Okay, then I think uh, whatever you want to discuss further, there's the option to do it on Slack. Uh, and now uh, we would like to welcome our next speaker, Josh Hamsch from the Robot Observatory, and he will talk about uh, Gaia Alert's follow-up observations. Uh, Josh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Can you see my uh, slide? Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. 
Can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. So I'm a retired uh, nuclear physicist, uh, and uh, I'm a part of uh, several uh, amateur organizations uh, in Belgium, where I live. The first one, then in the US, the AVSO, and then in Germany, the BFO, and then in France, uh, the GEOS. But this is my uh, fourth uh, contrib uh, third contribution to these workshops and my fourth uh, uh, participation. And uh, my uh, telescope uh, is called RODE. It's a remote observatory at Atacama Desert. But that also says uh, that it is in Chile. Uh, how can I move forward? Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, RODE is in uh, San Pedro de Atacama at Space Ops, uh, which is uh, hosted uh, by, uh, uh, the host is uh, Alain Maury, a Frenchman who was working uh, before in, at ESA. Uh, 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 San Pedro was uh, before the pandemic uh, very uh, touristic uh, with uh, all uh, facilities uh, you need, uh, especially internet. Uh, it has about uh, 2,500 meter elevation. And uh, as you have already heard, uh, Chile has an exceptional number of clear nights. I have uh, been there since uh, 2011, so I have uh, an experience of 11 years, uh, and I uh, observe every year between 312 and 345 nights. So the uh, equipment which I use is uh, off the shelf. Uh, it's a 40 centimeter f6.8 optimized style Kirkham from Orion Optics uh, UK. Uh, it was mentioned already, ASA, the Astro Systems Austria. Uh, I have a DDM85 uh, direct drive mount, which very fast and uh, can move around uh, uh, the, the sky, all sky uh, in a few, uh, yeah, say maximum 20 seconds uh, with a peer flip. Uh, I use the FLI ML16803 CCD camera with uh, UBVRI Astrodon photometric filters. I must say that the U filter has actually a red leak, so it's uh, uh, difficult to be used uh, for uh, red stars. Uh, I wonder uh, how, how others uh, are, uh, uh, what kind of filters they use and if they have problems with, with uh, leaks uh, in, in uh, uh, different uh, uh, parts of the spectrum, uh, then they, the filter uh, is actually uh, uh, designed for. Then I use uh, standard uh, Windows uh, uh, software, MaxMTL, CCD commander for automatic uh, uh, observations uh, because uh, during the time that your telescopes is observing, I sleep. And uh, less photometry, which is uh, developed by a, a, an amateur here in Belgium uh, for uh, uh, photometric uh, 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 determination of, uh, of the uh, images and VNC for remote access of the local PC. Uh, the nightly observation at road are uh, uh, for the moment in the order of uh, 30 to 50 targets. Uh, and I do uh, uh, snapshots uh, normally in uh, uh, different filters uh, up to uh, up to four, uh, two images per filter, just to be sure that uh, the photometry of, uh, of uh, uh, the, uh, I mean the, the image is, is correct if you have two. Uh, then uh, I uh, do time series in sequences of several targets, uh, three to five stars. So that means uh, I uh, uh, go from one star to the next with a fast uh, mount, uh, this is possible. And then I have a guidance of a few minutes maximum uh, for, for the, the, the different objects. So I can actually uh, optimize my time during the night uh, instead of having only one time series with a lot of uh, uh, observations and uh, very dense, which is not necessary if you have uh, 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 periods of a few hours, but I have uh, three to five time series. And of course, uh, if there are special targets on request, I also observe them solely for several hours, uh, like uh, for instance, CVs or, or uh, other, other stars. And this is a aerial view of the site. Uh, actually, the, the site is uh, hosting a, a a number of telescopes and also uh, giving uh, tourists the possibility to observe the night sky. Uh, uh, if you see my cursor, this, this part here is the tourist part where you have a, a, a number of telescopes uh, up to 1.15 meter actually, uh, where before the pandemic uh, every night 
uh, there came uh, a couple of buses of uh, up to 100 people uh, per night uh, to be shown uh, and uh, explained uh, the night sky in the southern hemisphere. And uh, all, all this uh, are the different uh, uh, kinds of uh, telescopes which are hosted by uh, Alain Maury. But this is my observatory uh, uh, behind uh, the Milky Way or in front of the Milky Way. Uh, it, it's a, a clamshell uh, uh, observatory, so it opens up uh, fully. So there is no need to that the dome has to rotate, um, because uh, otherwise I would have uh, already wet out uh, uh, all motors uh, because of uh, the many targets and the uh, and the way of observing uh, uh, scheme I do. Now uh, we will have a few uh, slides where I show the uh, follow up. Actually, I have sent them uh, via Prismac uh, to uh, to uh, uh, BH Tom, but apparently not all data have been uh, taken up in, in BH Tom, which might be a, a, a pity. Uh, so here I have uh, more than 450 nights of uh, observations of Gaia 20 FNR. You see the nice uh, uh, three-colored uh, light, light curve. Uh, uh, more or less uh, continuous uh, observations over this time. Uh, the gap is actually the seasonal gap uh, where the, the target was uh, behind the sun. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, Gaia 21 CCU, uh, which has a very uh, strange uh, behavior in the beginning of the of the observing uh, period. Again, the gap is the seasonal gap, and I have observed it uh, for 400 nights uh, up to the, the, the level of uh, the baseline. Uh, Gaia 22 BPL, which was presented before, uh, just uh, the two, two uh, presentations uh, before mine. I have uh, more than 100 nights and uh, a very nice uh, light curve uh, showing the, the peak uh, in, in two colors, uh, uh, very nicely uh, covered and uh, with a good precision, I would say. And then uh, uh, Gaia 22 AHY. I have observed uh, when when the, uh, 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 the target was uh, uh, discovered by Assassin as uh, Assassin 22 AV. I have started uh, the observations because I didn't know beforehand, and uh, uh, so actually the only the the falling part has been covered, but uh, uh, over 250 nights. Then uh, the most recent one, uh, 22 DKV, which was. Uh, 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 announced by uh, Lukas in an email. Uh, I have now uh, more than one one month of observations, and uh, the target is still on its rise, and uh, it's uh, observed uh, every night uh, uh, so far. And then uh, uh, two uh, uh, objects which I considered not so interesting. That's why they are smaller big pictures, but uh, uh, Gaia 22 uh, AWA was just mentioned uh, uh, two presentations before mine, uh, but uh, which uh, was was uh, 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 observed by other people and uh, uh, analyzed uh, by the student. Uh, okay, again, uh, I have uh, actually time series of uh, uh, of uh, this uh, object in two colors uh, over 160 nights which apparently have not yet made uh, their way into uh, BH Tom. And of course, uh, these are not the only targets which I'm observing. As I said, uh, I have uh, 30 to 50 targets, so mainly mainly outside the uh, Gaia uh, alerts. Uh, sometimes I have been asked uh, by, uh, for instance, here, uh, Erika Pakstine from Vilnius University, Lithuania. Uh, she came, she sent me an email to, to ask whether I could follow this uh, object, uh, which is a white dwarf. Uh, she remembered me from uh, my previous presentations at the uh, Gaia uh, uh, Alerts workshops. I didn't remember her, but uh, it's important that uh, she remembered me. So I, I'm observing it uh, uh, as we speak. Uh, 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 and uh, you see... Uh, a one night uh, 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 full full uh, uh, yeah uh, 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 coverage uh, of only this object uh, for and showing uh, uh, ups and downs uh, and and they are now analyzing the data uh, and of uh, it was also mentioned uh, young stellar objects to, uh, during this uh, workshop uh, I'm also. Uh, following uh, those those uh, stars for the hoist the hunting outbursting young stars uh, 
uh, project, uh, which is a US, a UK project. Uh, I have a Gaia F19 FCT over four years. Uh, I'm still observing it. Uh, Gaia EYY over four years. I'm still observing it. Uh, Gaia 21 EUY. Uh, I have uh, restarted uh, after the uh, serial, uh, seasonal gap and uh, Gaia 17 BPI. I observed since a, a couple of months uh, on request as well. So, and of course, there are many more uh, objects which I have been observing during the 11 years, uh, which I'm uh, already at, uh, at in Chile uh, observing. Uh, I have highlighted uh, intense NOVA observations and cataclysmic variables. For instance, this is a, 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 a plot of uh, uh, an object which is called Master and uh, this house number, uh, which I observed uh, since uh, a couple of months. Uh, and uh, which has, uh, after its super outburst, has uh, shown uh, six uh, uh, rebrightenings uh, up to now. And you see the, the level of the back background or the baseline is in the order of 19 Mac. So uh, although, of course, the error bar is uh, very large at this uh, level uh, with a 40 centimeter telescope, but nevertheless, uh, it's possible to reach this kind of uh, levels. And symbiotic stars as well, which have been mentioned, uh, I have a, a full list and I'm trying to uh, get the data into BH Tom uh, with the help of Brechemek. Uh, uh, I have already started to upload data uh, files and uh, for those of you of interest in, uh, uh, to see what, what uh, else I'm in, involved in, I have uh, uh, my papers uh, with co-authorship uh, can be found on ARC archive, uh, searching for my uh, last name, Hamsch, is only one, and these are already 120 plus ones. <clears throat> so uh, in conclusion, variable star observations are open to uh, lots of possibilities for an amateur to contribute to scientific research. Uh, participation in alerts and requests for observations. Uh, I'm doing that uh, regularly uh, for whatever uh, uh, alerts uh, I get and requests I get and uh, collaboration with many professional astronomers have already uh, uh, resulted in uh, um, many refereed papers. Actually, uh, I have on, on average uh, uh, 10 plus papers per year, which are more than I, I did uh, during my uh, professional career as a nuclear scientist. And thank you very much for your attention. This is my email address. And uh, I already mentioned it uh, beforehand, uh, the, the email list uh, of priority targets would be really uh, helpful uh, to continue again uh, to uh, uh, do more targets for uh, uh, Gaia alerts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have questions from the audience? And do we have questions uh, from Zoom? Uh, all right, so thank well, you very much. No, 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 oh, okay. I have a comment. Has a question. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, Josh. Um, this is, uh, as usual, amazing stuff. And, uh, and it's good that you follow uh, all the events we show here because sometimes we might actually, you know, there might be some delays in, in processing the data and we might not have yet included. But most of your targets, actually, some of them mentioned here. All, all, they are already on, on BHTOM and they have been processed as far as I, as I'm aware. So um, if we if we missed one or two, then uh, apologies for that, and we'll take care of it so that they are included. The ones you mentioned for Martina stuff, for example, this this I didn't know that you have. So uh, definitely we will include them and then reprocess the, the the data. So thanks for all all your data. Okay, thank you, Lukas. Thank you. Uh, all right, so. As always, we can continue the discussion on Slack. Uh, so thank you once again. And now I believe we will welcome our last speaker, not only of this session, but of the whole conference. And let's welcome Milan Stojanovic uh, from uh, the Astronomical Observatory of Belgrade. And he will speak about the retrospective of a Serbian-Bulgarian network of telescopes in Gaia. Uh, Milan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let me see. So I guess you can see my presentation, right? Yeah. OK. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's uh, really nice to be here. Uh, 
uh, I am following the Gaia Science Alerts workshops from, I, I think, from beginning. Uh, and um, I wasn't, uh, I, I didn't uh, have opportunity this time to be with you at the, at the site, uh, I hope, probably very beautiful site. Uh, so uh, I will present um, uh, a small retrospective of uh, what uh, we were uh, doing in a, in a way of uh, uh, Gaia follow-up network. Uh, we have uh, uh, this Serbian-Bulgarian network uh, that we actually started uh, a long time ago uh, in uh, 2013. And... Um, uh, so uh, in 2013, we, we created this small network of six, seven telescopes. Uh, and um, uh, at that time, it, uh, actually just one year later, we started working with uh, Gaia follow-up uh, network. The main idea for our project, uh, which is uh, a joint research project between Serbia and Bulgaria, is uh, Gaia Celestial Reference Frame and Fast Variable Astronomical Objects. This is uh, uh, in last two years. And as you can see, the PI of the project is Goran Damjanovic, my colleague, and uh, Roman Bacher from uh, Bulgaria. Uh, we have a, I have a list here of, of all telescopes that we uh, use and th that we used in this uh, last uh, um, on six to eight years. Um, I think that uh, every year we, we uh, have uh, presented some data from our telescopes, uh, but uh, the main source of telescopes, uh, of, of uh, images, sorry, comes from, this, from these two telescopes. Uh, 1.4 meter and 60 centimeter telescope at astronomical station Vidovica, which is in Serbia. Then we have these uh, three telescopes in Bulgaria. Another one is in Bulgaria, but on a different uh, site. And uh, occasionally, very occasionally, uh, very rarely, we, we also use a 1.31 meter telescope at uh, in, in, in India uh, because uh, collaborator uh, is uh, our collaborator is. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to to really go into details, but uh, if somebody is uh, interested in uh, what uh, camera and uh, what's the field of view, uh, you you can find uh, find it here. So you have the site, the telescope, and then um, everything is here. I think uh, more or less. But uh, we have a uh, bigger telescopes with. Uh, you know, smaller pixel scale and smaller field of view, and then we have some smaller telescopes and so on. Uh, here are the two pictures. Um, uh, on the left, you can see our uh, uh, newest telescope. Uh, it's made by ASA, uh, 1.4 meter, very, very similar to what was presented just three presentations ago from, um, uh actually as they as they plan to make 1.5 it will be just a little bit bigger but uh, we are very uh, happy how this telescope works and it's uh, really used a lot here uh it's very uh, demanding uh, and uh, we uh, we need to apply for the time uh six months uh, in advance and uh to uh in order to get a uh, night uh, nights observing time on, on this telescope uh it's similar with 60 centimeter but uh, that telescope is a little bit less um, um less, less used so there is a more opportunity for us to do some uh, follow-up for guy alerts and here i present uh, the the newest addition to, to our family uh, it's a 40 centimeter telescope and uh, I, I was very, very uh, hope, hope, hopefully, uh, 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 imagined that it will work, uh, start working in 2022. But uh, we have to postpone um, first light for 2023. And uh, this telescope will be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I, I will be the how to 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 say main user of of this telescope. So there will be a lot of. Uh, uh, opportunities to, to work with this. Uh, this site is a very nice site, but uh, uh, in 2022, we had a really bad, uh, bad luck with weather uh, because every time we uh, get the observing, uh, uh, observing time, uh, it was uh, cloudy and then <laughs> tomorrow it's, it's a perfect day and, uh, 
and we just uh, missed our our uh, opportunity. So uh, that's that's always the problem when you uh, have to apply for time uh, in, a, in a written proposal and uh, and uh, very much in advance. These are these are uh, telescopes from Bulgaria, and uh, I just wanted to show a few of our. Uh, let's say interesting observations that we did, but uh, at the end you will see that we we contributed to more than 100 different objects. Uh, so uh, I will just list some that are uh, my personal favorites. So uh, Gaia 19 uh, TKE is uh, already mentioned a lot of times, but what I wanted to, to show you here is that uh, the or literally the first observation after uh, Gaia was uh, done by by our team, uh, and you can see our dot is is here. On at least uh, this is uh, when you open follow up. Uh, if there is there is some more data on uh, observation of this object, then we might not be the first. It's it's not important. It's just uh, uh, interesting. Uh, that that was interesting for me, and I hope the paper will be published soon about this interesting object. Uh, then there is another one, uh, Gaia 21AZB, and as you can see, our dot here, and among other, uh, is the one that was uh, actually at the peak, uh, and uh, we caught it really uh, here at the at the maximum brightness for for this object. Uh, uh, this was a, a very interesting object since it changed the the magnitude almost four four magnitudes and. Um, um, I think this object was also mentioned before. So uh, another uh, very interesting uh, 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 night was when I was observing at uh, May May the fourth. Uh, maybe no, uh, I don't know if if uh, somebody is familiar, but this is a uh, International Star Wars Day. Uh, uh, never mind that. Uh, I was um, uh, actually uh, I had uh, some time on the telescope. Um, and uh, I, the, that, the idea was that um, it, it was a time from some other uh, colleagues. So I had to take a really quick uh, uh, choosing of, of tar targets. So I opened the Gaia Alerts web page, of course. And at that time, I looked what, what can be visible from our site. And uh, I, I saw this object, Gaia uh, BTJ. And uh, if you see here, uh, this is uh, only uh, Gaia observations. And um, I said, okay, this looks interesting. And uh, let's, let's do it, let's, let's observe. And um, you can see here that I was the only, only person ever to observe this. At least, again, I'm saying what's in the database of follow-up. Uh, you can see our, our data is here. That it's just a little bit misaligned. This is Gaia data. This is uh, data that uh, we observed. And then again, Gaia data and all this. So you, you see we are, uh, we are there very, very nice. Uh, uh, but uh, unfortunately, nobody, nobody else uh, observed this, uh, uh, this object. Um, all in all, uh, we had uh, five objects in 2021 and 2022. This is really less than what we expected and what we were hoping for. Um, usually we observe much more, but uh, as I said, in 2022, we were so unlucky with, uh, with all the nights that we got for observation that it was really like, I don't know, it was almost six, uh, six months without uh, any observation. Uh, this uh, uh, astronomical station Vidovica is really uh, not bad site. Uh, we have, a, uh, as you can see, these are just some some published papers that that we were part of, and uh, uh, you can see here we, we wrote uh, the thing uh, can be between one and and three arc seconds. When it's three, it's really not good, but uh, it can be very low. Some with some nights even zero point seven. Uh, but it's not always like that. Okay, let's say that some mean uh, is 1.2. The, the bigger problem is that we don't have so many uh, clear nights. So when we have a nice clear night, then the thing is really nice and good. But uh, we don't get, uh, but, but by some statistics, it's um, around 100 clear nights in a, in a year. 
so it's not perfect. But at that time, if it is uh, overlapping with our observing time, then we can uh, do some uh, some science with uh, this. So all in all, uh, uh, we started observing in 2014. Usually it was almost, let's say, 15 objects per year that we followed. But uh, in the last three years, it was a little bit less. In total, around 3,400 images were produced and uh, sent to the Gaia Alerts uh, web page, the, 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 the archive, the follow-up archive. And uh, later, it was used for uh, many different papers. Uh, our equipment is, uh, let's say, almost everything is, is in the last 10 years uh, acquired, so it's uh, not bad. Uh, we have uh, the, the list of cameras is uh, on the previous slide. So if somebody is interested, they, they can see. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to talk at your conference. Thank you very much. Uh, so do we have any questions? And on Zoom? Okay, so. so thank you very much, Milan. And this concludes yeah. our. Uh, I believe this was really inspiring to see the commitment of uh, follow up observators. And I will pass uh, the microphone. Okay, so I, I, I have the, the first word, so I have the last word to say. Uh, so we, we're done. Uh, we survived three days of an amazing conference, I think. I enjoyed it very much. I hope you have too. Not only the weather and the beach and the swimming pool, but also the, the talks here. Uh, so thank you all for uh, for coming here to Sardinia. You, I, I'm sure you've been also you know, properly help, uh, rewarded with the weather and so on. Thank you all uh, for joining us um, on Zoom and participating remotely. Uh, thank you all on YouTube as well. Future people who are going to watch us as well. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we have to thank uh, the, the sponsors here, so the ORP grant uh, and the N grant, University of Warsaw, uh, this is official, but also um, I should thank uh, all the people who helped organize, organizing it um, to help uh, chairing the uh, sessions, uh, mostly young people uh, getting their training in chairing, but you've done a great job. And then the um, all people who helped uh, preparing the meeting to happen, booking flights and making budgets like those program and so on. In particular, I would like to thank Milena Ratajczak, who did like, last month, last month doing almost nothing else but um, buying tickets and talking to hotels and so on. So thank you, Milena. I, I speak Italian already. <laughs> she speaks Italian now, yes, that's great. So I hope you're not discouraged and you will be able to help with the next workshop. Um, <laughs> Perfecto. Yeah, we're still deciding where uh, and when the next workshop is going to happen, but it so will. It is going to happen. Uh, that we know for sure. Uh, it is going to happen probably around that time uh, next year. Uh, so there will be probably a lot of new development until then. But for the next, for the coming year, I wish you all um, uh, all the fun with the. Each top, of course, that was the main goal of this workshop, and I hope we achieved it. Uh, I hope people got familiar with each uh, and will start using it, start spreading it uh, to others, um, joining new telescopes to it. We've heard about many new telescopes around um, in the world, uh, which are popping in. You know, four meter telescope in Turkey, one and a half meter in, in Georgia. So this is the, there is still. And a good times ahead of us uh, coming, especially for the time domain astronomy. That's what we are doing. Mm, so uh, keep in touch, everyone. Uh, make the black hole come great, uh, more even more greater, um, and uh, and do some science and write papers. Of course, of course, we want to hear even more uh, results uh, next year. So with those wishes, uh, I'll stop talking and I'll stop everything. Bye. Thank you. Celebration. Oh. Yeah, celebration.